Hey guys, Ben Lai here from Rockstar Fitness. Today we are looking at food prepping. Now food prepping has got some great advantages. Firstly, it allows you to get all your meals for the week organized and, and set up so that they work in line with all the gains that you're trying to put on in the gym. Secondly is your budget. Food prepping allows you to save a little bit more money by prepping all your meals in advance than you would if you were buying or eating on the go. And thirdly, the great thing about food prepping is it stops impulse buying or impulse eating. You know, when you, it's 8 o'clock at night, you get home, you're tired, you start raging and raving through all the cupboards to try and find the first thing that you can shove into your mouth. That sort of thing is really bad because you're starving and you're just going to eat copious amounts of food until you feel satisfied. By food prepping, you get all your meals and all your vitamins and all your nutrients all in the line so that you don't have that impulse to, you know, starve. Now, today we're looking at three different dishes. It's going to take me about 40 minutes to put together three different dishes. 15 meals per week, all right? Now, the first thing you wanna do is get nice and organized. I've got a big pot, boiling water ready to go, I've got my big crock pot ready to go, and I've got my oven preheating at 180 degrees. I also like to have a rubbish bowl, so that I'm not going back and forth from the bin. I can just throw all my rubbish in there and I don't have to move around too much. First thing we're starting with is our sweet potatoes. I'm gonna peel them and chop them. Really simple, guys, really fast. Doesn't have to win any pretty awards. Top and tail, easy. Cut it in half, quarter it. Nice big chunks, throw it into a big bowl. Obviously you wanna try and make sure that these are all around the same size so that they all cook relatively evenly. If you do have one that's quite big, just cut it down a little bit smaller. Now I'm throwing them in a big bowl so that I can pre-season them before they go into the oven. Top and tail. Quarter it. Quarter it, line them up. Nice sweet potato chunks. Throw them in the bowl. Doesn't matter really if you miss a couple. Half it. This one's quite a bit smaller, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to quarter that one. I'm just going to chop it into big chunks. All right. So the next thing we're looking at is seasoning. I like to use olive oil. Obviously, you might like to use coconut oil. I find coconut oil has got a particular type of nutty sort of flavor. So for this particular dish, I won't usually use it. Salt and pepper. Decent amount of sea salt. I'm using the uh, Himalayan pink salt. Nice fresh black pepper. Season that real well. Give it a mix. Easy toss. Pan ready to go. Lay it all out. Make sure it's not all on top of each other. Spread it out nice and evenly. Open up your oven. Chuck it in. Bam, that's the first one done. Now, second thing we're looking at is your chicken. Now, I'm using organic free range chicken, chicken drumsticks. I like chicken drumsticks. I find them you know, really, really easy to eat when I'm on the go. What I'm gonna do is throw it into a bowl, the same bowl that you threw the sweet potato into. Rubbish, go into my rubbish bowl. Again, chicken drumsticks. I usually work to two to three chicken drumsticks per serve. For me, I don't eat that much, so, you know, because I'm eating regularly throughout the day, I might only have two chicken drumsticks that I might be lining up with. Plus with the sweet potato and the cucumber that we're gonna put with it, you find that you, know, you don't actually need that much meat. Next thing we're looking at is your garlic. All I'm gonna do, top and tail my garlic, give it a bang until that skin falls off, perfect. Throw that in. We're looking at three cloves of garlic. Easy, one more, bang, 
take off the skin. Again, just throwing it into that garbage bowl that you got rock, rocking on the desktop. Now, easy chop, doesn't have to be super fine. It's a good little tip to tuck your fingers underneath when you're cutting. Tuck them back using your knuckle as your main part. Throw that into your bowl. Easy. Next thing we're looking at, ginger. Nice number of ginger. About the size of your thumb. Simple. Top and tail. Cut the skin off it. Really, really light. These are all just really great aromatic veggies that you just add a lot more flavour to. Rough chop that up. Awesome. Throw that in. Simple guys, you want to try and make sure your space is always clean. Now we're going to just add a little bit more flavorings to it. First one I like to use, sesame oil. Sesame oil is quite potent, so you don't want to use too much of it. I'd be looking at about a tablespoon, but honestly, this is all about just throwing it all together and making it as simple as you possibly can. Next thing we're looking at, soy sauce. Good splash of that all the way through. Awesome. Next thing I like to add, a little bit of sweet sherry. Adds a little bit more flavor to the meat. Gives you a nice little sauce at the end. Good little splash of that, about a quarter of a cup. Give that a mix around. Really, really easy. Good. Now the thing about this is that it would taste really good if you managed to cover it up and leave it to marinate for an hour or so, a couple of hours, even a day. But obviously we're looking to speed time up and it's still going to taste great, especially in that sauce. So you can just go the way it is now if you wanted to. So, nice big pan. Take your chicken, tip it into that pan. All those sauces and garlic and onion, throw that all through there. Not onion, ginger, sorry. Lay it all out nice and flat. If you want it to go sticky and golden. Good. Now last but not least, secret ingredient. Uh, organic honey. Now the honey gives it this nice stickiness to it. Also this great sweetness. I like to lather that all over the top of my chicken. Good three or four large heaping tablespoons. Make sure all the chicken gets a bit of honey on it. You find the honey will caramelize, melt down a little bit into the sauce. The saltiness of the soy sauce and that kick of the garlic and the ginger really, really makes for a beautiful sauce. So that's all going through. Now also, of course, the chicken is cooking on the bone. It is a drumstick. You'll get that little bit more flavor out of it. And it goes back in. Now looking at it now, I may need a little bit more sauce, so what I'm going to do is get a little bit more soy sauce, just a touch. The meat will release its own juices as well. That's done. Bam. So that will take about 40 minutes to cook. Now in about 20 minutes you want to go in and just turn those drumsticks. If you find your sauce is reducing a little bit too much and you don't want it to burn, just add a little bit of water to it, just keeping the sauce and the chicken nice and moist. Now the next dish we're looking at, really, really simple. We're going into a beef stew. So we've got a nice crock pot here. We're going to get it nice and hot. Turning that up nice and easy. And the first thing I'm going to do is chop up some onions. So, easy way to do an onion. Getting a bit full before I start. So, before I start the second dish, onions, take the top off, take the bottom off, cut it in half. Pull off the skin. Really, really, really simple. You'll find there is one skin layer, the one membrane that you just stick your thumb under and it'll just come off. Real simple. Same on the next one. Now, you might ask, is there a secret to not crying when you cut onions? No. <laughs> I've had easy people tell me, you know, if you hold your breath, if you have an open flame going when you're doing it, it might help. No. 
I mean, the only thing I can say is just have a really sharp knife so you're not spending too much time crushing the skin, but rather cutting through the skin. So that's all going in the bin. My pot's starting to get nice and hot there. It's brilliant. Now, with your onions, not looking for anything fine. Chop it in four. Perfect. Olive oil. Lay the bottom of that pan with it. What we're looking to do is sweat the onions off. Perfect. As you cut them, just throw them in there. Same on the next. Really, really simple guys. Rough chop those onions off. Sweat these off real easy. As you can see, we're already onto our second dish. Didn't take very long at all for the first one. Easy chopping. Throw that in there. Gonna let those sweat down a little bit. Now we're going up to garlic. Now I love garlic. For this one I'm gonna use about four cloves. So same deal as before. Squash and peel. Top and bottom. Squash and peel. See it's not taking very long at all. Squash and peel. Sometimes you got that one that just needs a little bit more of a tap. Perfect. One more. Right. Okay, so that's all my garlic peeled. That's sizzling away nicely. Rough chop your garlic, same way you did before. Rough chop that up again. Push it into a nice little pile and just run your knife through it. Put your hands at the tip of your knife, just run it through. Easy cut, scoop that up, throw that into your pan, wooden spoon, give it a quick stir, you'll start to smell it already, it already smells great, really 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 easy, we're going to let that cook down and soften a little bit, while that's getting ready, what we're going to do is get these carrots ready, I like to line all three of them up together, take off the tip, Take off the bottom. Now of course this is going into a stew, I don't find I need to peel them. Everything gets all nice and squashed and emulsified together once it's all in there. Great, so these onions are nice and soft now. See it doesn't take very long at all. You don't want the onion to burn, you don't want the garlic to burn. Just keep it moving just a little bit. Next thing we're going, organic beef. It's about 500 grams of organic beef. Take the top off, perfect. Easy, throw that all in there. Now you want to make sure you break it up, just push it down, let it seal in all the flavours. You want the meat to now get nice and brown. So it's browning the meat in with that garlic and that onion. Give it a good stir, give it a good push down. Really, really, really easy guys. Just keep that browning up. Keep breaking it up, make sure you don't get big balls. Now while that's in there and going, what I'm going to add now, my little secret ingredient, two chorizo sausages. Basically it gives you a little bit more meat to your soup or to your stew. Also releases some great flavours. The chorizo sausage is great with that great oil in it and the herbs and the spices. So all I'm going to do, take off the top, cut them in nice big chunks. I don't want them to break up while they're cooking in the stew for the next 40 minutes. So about centimetre chunks. Easy. Great. Take these awesome sausages, throw them in the pan. 
awesome. Give that a stir as well. Good, so the mix starting to brown. Okay, so your meat's browning off nicely. Got some great flavors going on in there. Now the meat's gonna start releasing its own little juices, that's okay. You don't want it to stew too much. You want the meat to get a little bit more brown. So keep it stirring, keep it moving, keep sealing in that meat as it goes around. Perfect, but if it does start to stew, don't worry about it, because you're throwing so much into it already, and it's gonna cook so slowly, it's fine. Carrots. Cut in half, easy, good centimetre chunks. I love my veggies. Throw them in there. Watch shows like The River Cottage, Jamie Oliver's Garden, and I think to myself, geez, I'd love to have a garden like that. Alright, soon. Start with my herbs and my flowers first. <laughs> Alright, so three carrots, chopped, throwing them in. It's awesome. Give that a mix through. Good. Next thing we're looking at, got some celery. Some great celery here. All I'm going to do is take off the bottoms, stalk bits, pull off some of these leaves. If you've got rabbits, they love these celery leaves. Just pull them off, simple. Line all your celery up, give that a run through your knife. Again, chop it nice and rough and simple. Really simple, easy cooking. Makes life really easy if you've got all your ingredients ready to go to start with. Throw your uh, celery in there, give that a stir. Some people might tell you to uh, throw your carrot and your celery and your onions in first, let them sweat off, take it out and then throw in your meat. I find that just really a hassle. Just throw it all, one pot wonder, really, really, really simple. Good, so now that that's all coming together nicely, my meat's starting to brown up a little bit. What we're gonna do now is deglaze the pan. What that means is all that nice brown sticky stuff that's sticking to the bottom of the pan, I wanna get that up and into the stew so it gives me that little bit more flavor. Using a really nice little red wine here, nothing super expensive, but something that I would like to drink as well, not like a, a vinegar that I found on the floor somewhere. So, undo your bottle. I think I throw in about half a cup. Perfect, gives you a little bit more depth to the stew. Give that a stir, let that cook off a little bit, just let the alcohol cook off. Rub the bottom of your pot. Get all those nice crispy bits off the bottom. Simple, give it a rub. Great, that's looking really, really good. Now as a bit of a kick, I like to throw in some chili. So I've got a nice big fat chili here. This one here, the seeds are incredibly hot. But again, I like to have mine a little bit spicy, so each their own. If you don't like it that spicy, no problem. Keeping the seeds in it, just throw that in there. Give that a stir. Make sure you don't go to the toilet before washing your hands. Make sure you don't rub your eyes. All that fun stuff. Good. I'm going to add a little bit more flavor to it now. Italian mixed herbs, master foods, really easy to get. If you've got a whole lot of herbs, fresh herbs in your garden, thyme, rosemary, sage, go with that. If not, dry herbs, fine. Roughly, bam, just gonna throw that in there. Awesome, that was about two and a half tablespoons. Give that a mix through. Now you'll notice that I'm not adding any salt or pepper just yet. With salt and pepper, I'm gonna leave that to about the end to add it and then season it that way. I find that if I put it too early, it might contrast all the flavors that are going on. I really haven't let them all mellow just yet. Can of organic tomatoes, real simple. Pop the can. 
into my rubbish bowl. Throw those bad boys in there. Use the can. Fill it with some water. Pour that in there. Two cans. There you go. Give that a stir. Really, really easy. Good. Now my secret weapon, Worcestershire sauce. Love this stuff. I find it gives you a real depth to your sauce, real depth to your stew, and gives that smoky sort of flavor. Pop your Worcestershire sauce, give it a good couple of dashes. I'd say probably about two tablespoons. Give that a stir. Great. Now, in my garden, I've got some fresh thyme. All I've done is gone out and picked it. All I'm gonna do, throw the whole lot in there together. I can spend time peeling it off the, peeling the leaves off, but in all honesty, it's all gonna go together. I can pick out the stalks later. This is just gonna give me a nice little flavor to kick through the entire stew. So, bring that to the boil, turn it down, let it simmer for about 40 minutes. See you in 40 minutes. Then all these dishes will start to come together and then we'll start on the third dish. All right guys, so it's been about 40 minutes now and the uh, chicken's done, the sweet potatoes are done and this stew is reduced down really, really, really nicely. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna taste it just to see if it needs any seasoning. Which it does, I think it needs a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Not much though, but it's a really good stew. Oh, I tell you what, that's, that's pretty nice. So, a bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, not too much. You can always add salt, you can't take it away. Give that a bit of a stir. Perfect. Now that we're at the back end of the cooking process for this stew, what we're going to be adding is some capsicum. Just adds a little bit more flavor to it and a little bit more bulk to the stew so it's a little bit more filling. All I'm going to do, cut the bottom off it, cut the top off it, takes that little core out, roughly chop the bottom, cut into three, cut in three again, throw that in the stew. Now the reason why I didn't add this on earlier is because I still like a little bit of crunch to my capsicum. I don't like it all mushy in the stew so I add it right at the back end of the process. Cut it in half, slide your knife around the core Really easy, it'll just roll out for you like a carpet. Throw that in. Then you've got these nice thick chunks of flesh. Cut that down. Rough cut that up. Throw that in. Rough cut that up. Throw that in. So it's one capsicum. Now what I've also got is some basil that I picked out of my garden. Easy. Shred the leaves off, just throw them in whole, break them up, and then I'll just add a lot more flavor to your stew. I mean, at the end of the day, who said that healthy food didn't have to just be boring? You want it to taste quite nice, so. Whole basil leaves, throw them through it. Nothing better than growing herbs in your garden. Fresh herbs. I like to eat the basil flowers too, if you've got a male plant. And I've got some fresh parsley as well. Stalk and everything, rough chop. Throw that in. And there's our stew done. Really, really simple guys. Really, really, really basic. Now, what we're doing next is we're starting on our third dish. What we're looking at doing is some red cabbage with something called sous vide salmon. Sous vide means that a salmon is cooked in boiling water in a vacuum packed bag. Now, Bird's Eye now sell these frozen salmon fillets that come already pre-packed in these vacuum packed bags. Really, really cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks and I got like 14 salmon fillets. So really, really cheap. First thing we're starting with, red cabbage. Turn your pan on nice and hot. All I'm gonna do, that's half a red cabbage. Cut in half again. And you've got this core that runs down the middle. Turn your knife on the side, cut out that core, throw it away. Cut that core in half again and then rough chop that nice and fine. Let the knife just run through it. Really, really, really simple. Now in this situation, I am going to use some coconut oil. So 
just a bit easy. And then just throw that red cabbage in. Now I still like a little bit of crunch to my red cabbage, so I'm not going to throw copious amounts of oil in there and I'm not going to let it cook for a long period of time. All I'm doing is trying to crust it up a little bit, add a little bit more flavour to it all. Red cabbage takes a long time to wilt down, so we're not looking to wilt it down to nothing. I still want it quite meaty. So quarter, chop that up, really simple. Throw that in the pan. So easy guys, really, really, really easy. Chop it up. Obviously you can't get red cabbage, you can use normal cabbage. If I was using normal cabbage, white cabbage, I'd let it cook down a little bit more. Maybe add some mustard seed to it, or seeded mustard, sorry. Easy. So while that's cooking, really simple, I'm going to take my five salmon fillets and just dump them in that hot water that we had prepared earlier. All that's going to take a couple of minutes in total to cook. Drop that down, make sure they're all submerged. Give your cabbage a toss. Real easy. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Simple. More pepper. Great. And what I like to add to this as well, you guessed it, a bit of garlic. Again, top and tail, give it a bang, peel the flesh off or the skin off, throw it in your rubbish bowl, give that a rough shot. It's only one clove, I don't need a lot in this one. Run your knife through it. Simple, throw that in there. Great, now we're just going to let that wilt down a little bit. Now the final thing that we're going to add, and this goes with my chicken and my sweet potato, is cucumber. I really like cucumber salad. This adds a little different dynamic to the chicken, makes things nice and fresh and light. All I'm going to do, top and tail, throw in the rubbish bowl. I'm going to go halfway down the cucumber and just run my life around it without splitting all the way through. Using a peeler, just peel your cucumber until you reach the seeds and then just switch the edge. There's one, hit the edge again, pull that down, pull it down, pull it down. How easy is that? Slide it down, slide it down, slide it down. Good. Keep that running, keep that running, keep that running, keep that running. Hit the seeds. On to the next one. On my fourth corner now. Great. I've hit the seeds. Peel it in half. Bam. Throw that away. Now I'm on to the last part. See, it's all so quick. Keep an eye on your cabbage. Give it a little bit of squid. Give it a toss. Cooking should be fun, guys. There shouldn't be anything. It shouldn't be hard or frustrating. Very, very, very simple. And by doing it all on the weekend, you've got your whole week free. Sit down, watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Not that I do that. Walking Dead, maybe. That, that's me. All right, so you've got these nice long strings. All I'm going to do with these is all I'm going to do is add a little bit of sesame oil, touch, give it a nice flavouring, great, swing it around, and there's my cucumber salad done. So, cabbage, almost done exactly the way I want it, you can see it, some of these bits are going a bit brown, that's good, all I'm going to add now to give it a little bit of a kick, red wine vinegar, give that a splash, perfect, in the swirl. Done. Turn it off, let it sit in its own heat. That's perfect. Let's have a look at our salmon. It's 
coming along really, really well. Beautiful. Now the great thing about sous vide cooking is that the fish remains really nice and moist. It's going to be very, very, very tasty. Now, just so I can show you how we're going to be plating up the cabbage and the salmon in a Tupperware container, I like to drizzle a little bit of, uh, little bit of olive oil, a little bit of lime juice, and I serve it with some goat's cheese just because it gives me a little bit more flavour. Love goat's cheese, love salmon, love red cabbage. Perfect. Now, this will make up three meals per day, so a five meal deck. Now, it's important to note that you know these three meals will keep in the fridge for the full five days. After five days, you've got your weekend to start cooking for yourself again, then you can do it all over again on Sunday. So, salmon's almost done. Just gonna grab a Tupperware container here. What I'm gonna do, grab a little bit of cabbage. Throw that in my container. Perfect. Oh, it smells awesome. It smells great. I'm gonna take out one of my salmon fillets. See, it didn't take very long at all, only a couple of minutes from frozen. Run your knife through the bag. Pull it open, watch the steam. Into my Tupperware container. A lime, roll it out, get the juice ready to go. Give it a slice down the side. A little bit of lime juice, perfect. A little bit of olive oil, perfect. And my goat's milk cheese. Love goat's cheese. Take out the block. Give it a little slice straight down with your knife, on top of your salmon, and there you have it. One simple meal. One of my simple meals, really, really simple. I'll have it all plated up for you, and I'll show you what it all looks like. Hey guys, so here you have it. You got your 15 meals, so three meals per day for five days. We've got your red cabbage, salmon, and goat's cheese, real awesome. We've got that awesome beef and chorizo stew that we put together. And we've got that sticky chicken drumsticks with sweet potato and cucumber and sesame salad. Now, it's important to note that there's three meals laid out per day, but these won't be the only things that I'll eat throughout the day. So let's say 6 a.m. I'll wake up, I might have a protein shake, maybe a smoothie. Then about mid-morning, about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, I'll, uh, I'll come and hit the first block of these meals. Then a couple of hours later for lunch, about 12.30, 1, 1.30, um, I'll hit a lunchtime pack, so another one of these meals again. Then about 4 o'clock I might have some fruit, a protein shake, maybe some nuts, um, helps me keep going throughout the day. And then for dinner I might come and heat up another one of these meals, uh, depending on what I've spread out for that day. Now another thing to note is that all the food that we cook today cost $54, divide that by 15 meals, worked out to be about $3.60 per meal. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty damn good saving. So if you like today's episode, and you want to see more, you want to see some more recipes, uh, maybe some more ideas on how to prep your food, uh, simply like this video or subscribe to our YouTube channel and let me know.